Although I've said that editing the code for a VB macro is a little bit dangerous and can cause problems, there is a situation in which I would advocate editing macro code, and that is when you would like to add a confirmation dialog box. This cannot be done through recording because you cannot record a confirmation dialog box. It needs to be added after once the macro exists. So we're actually going to create a macro that will delete the current row. So the first stage is to create that macro. And then the second stage is to add a confirmation dialog box that says, are you sure you want to delete the current row? That way you're adding in a little bit of a fail safe. So let's put my name into a cell. And then if I want to get rid of this row, I'm going to record a macro to do that. So it's developer, record macro. What's the macro going to be called? CMD delete row. And because it's going to be extremely useful, I'm going to store it in the personal macro workbook. This macro deletes the current row. OK, so I need to make sure relative referencing is on. And it is. And then I simply select the current row and delete. And then stop recording. So it's not a lengthy macro. Let me see if that works. Macros. Delete row and the row's gone. So let's add another one that will delete the current column. Record macro, CMD delete column, personal macro workbook. This macro deletes the current column. OK, relative referencing is on. So I select the current column, right click delete, and then stop. So I now have two macros, one that will delete the current column and one that will delete the current row. Let's add those to our ribbon. Options, customize ribbon. I have my own tab within here called macros and then two groups, actions and formatting. So let's choose our macros and add delete column to the actions one and delete row to the same little group. And we've seen already that we can rename them. So that one's going to be delete column. And we need some kind of delete image. Yes, it doesn't indicate deleting, but at least it's sort of column looking. So we'll have that one for delete column. And then rename delete row. And we'll have the row looking icon. OK, OK. And then on my macros ribbon, I now have delete row and delete column. Because this is stored in my personal macro workbook and the ribbon is on my version of Excel, I can now open any file and run these commands. So let's take our employees data, which is available in your working file, and see if our two macros work. So I could click into the Mary Wallace line, delete row, and she's gone. No questions. Are you sure or anything? It's gone. I could do the same for address two. Just click into that column, delete column, and the column is gone. Now that is an extremely dangerous macro, very useful, but extremely dangerous. And they ought to require an are you sure step. So how do we add in an are you sure dialog box? Well, we need to edit the macros. So we go to developer, macros, and it's these two that we want to edit. But what we're going to find out now is that we cannot edit them. They're on the personal macro workbook, which is hidden. So I need to cancel this, view, unhide, personal. Then I can go to developer, macros, and delete column, edit. So this is my macro, command delete column. There's my description. This macro deletes the current column, and it's simply two lines of code, one that selects the column, one that deletes it. What I need to do is around these two lines of code is put an if statement. So let's give ourselves a bit of space before and after. Now, an if statement is very much like an Excel if, in that it starts if but it doesn't need an equals. To create a dialog box, I need a function called msg box, msg box, open brackets. And you can see that the VB is going to help me out. First thing I need is a prompt. So that goes in speech marks. Are you sure you want to delete the current column? Close speech marks, comma. The second part is what buttons do I want on my message box? And there are lots of choices of buttons, but what I really want is a yes or a no. And I see them in the list, VB, yes, no. So I choose those, comma, and then I need a title for my box. Now it's got square brackets around it, which means that it's not actually a compulsory parameter, but I quite like it. I'm going to put a title 
that says one moment dot dot close speech marks and then I don't need the rest of those parameters so I close the bracket for my msg box so if msg box are you sure you want to delete the current column even with my little typo in there it's going to give me a yes no button and it's going to say one moment on the top of it equals and you can see I get a list of choices again so I'm going to say if it equals bb okay space then and that's the end of that line return and you can see what the VB editor has done is title cased the if and changed it to blue and done camel case on the MSG box. So if are you sure you want to delete the current column, then it will go ahead and run these two lines of commands. But that's all we want it to do. So then I need to do an end if. And again, the VB editor has changed it blue and title cased it. So I didn't have to do that. Now I know that it's happy because of the blue color coding that it's happy with the code. So because it's happy with the code, I'm going to take that line there, the if line, and use it up here for the current row by pasting, telling it to run those two lines of command, and then end if. But this time I just need to change the message. Are you sure you want to delete the current row? It will give me a yes, no. If the person answers VB yes, shows the wrong choice there as well. VB yes. Then do what it's asked it to do. So I'm using the MSG box function to ask a question, give them a yes, no option. And if they choose yes, then we will go ahead and carry out the commands of my little macro that I created by recording. I didn't have to write the code for that. The only code I'm having to write is these if statements around my macro recorded code to make sure that it only runs if they say yes. So I close the editor. I'm now back in my personal macro workbook. I'm going to save that so that it saves my macros and I'm going to rehide it, hide. So now I'm back in my employees file. I've made the changes to the personal macro workbook. I've changed those two macros. If I now try to delete a row, let's try to get rid of Mary Smith. I'm asked, are you sure you want to delete the current row? So there's my yes, no button. There's my title, one moment. If I say no, then nothing happens. So I go back to delete row and say yes, then the row gets deleted. And now ID number nine has gone. The same with the column. Let's pick on a column that's not much use. So we go into the marital status. So I go to delete column. Are you sure? No. And the marital status column remains. If I go back to delete column and say yes, then the marital status column is gone. So the two very useful functions for deleting columns and rows, but I've added in that if step, which makes it a confirmation that they actually want to go ahead and carry out that macro. I would certainly recommend adding in those if steps to any macros that will change dramatically your data because the actions of a macro are not an undoable option.